So we have a 2024 uh, Medcan State um, Spring Run question. So I just took two questions. So this was a number 16. So we have operation and we are defined X as something Y is given by this expression. And based on this, what is the value of the given um, uh, expression, right? So the, the question is kind of straightforward, but at the same time, the numbers that we are given doesn't look fun. So when you like choose this five over 2024 for X, and then you just plug into there. So you get five over like 2024 plus like Y equals one, and then you can just plug it, but it's gonna be a bit messy. And then that shouldn't be the, um, the, the approach that we should be using. So, or that shouldn't be the case actually they are asking us to do so either. So that's why we have to kind of come up with something else if, if possible. So what I'm gonna do, you know, on both sides of this expression, you know, this parenthesis and this parenthesis is the same. So, which is why instead of finding those values, I'm gonna say, let's say this is equal to something. Okay, so let's say this whole thing will be a number. I'm gonna call that as a K. Okay, and whatever that number is gonna be same right here as well, because that's the same thing, right? So if if we know the the value of this parenthesis, when you plug five over 2024 and Y is one, then you get a number. So I'm gonna just assume that number is K. And then I'm gonna to try to see if there is something nicer going on after that. So two minus that number. So I'm gonna use now two minus K. And then that is our star. So just imagine this is our X value and then K minus two. Okay, so as you see, this is way better than dealing with some uh, bad fractions. So let's use our X as the this uh, two minus K, so this is basically meant for our X, and then this is for our Y value. So replace this into given expression. So the our X is two minus K, so it will get two minus K, and then plus Y, which is K minus two, and then plus X, X, Y, so which is two minus K, and K minus two. And then this is all over, divided by x squared, x is the two minus k, so two minus k squared. So the rest just manipulation, but we have a lot of nicer uh, cancellations. So these guys will be add up to zero. And this is two minus k, and then this is like, we have kind of similar expression. You may expand these if you want it, but I think we don't need that either. So like, if I wanna like look at this guy, K minus two, if I pull the negative one out of these two, so you will get negative of like two minus K. So this is basically this guy. And then there is another two minus K. So I just take this as I write the first one, which doesn't like first uh, product, which doesn't make any difference. And then this is divided by two minus K to the second power. So as you say, the numerator is two minus K times two minus K, the denominator is the square of that. So if you wanna cancel, you can. So this is equal to negative one. Why this is important? Because as you see, by just doing this much work, we were able to get the result to be negative one, regardless of what K value we actually uh, about to get if we really plug these numbers in the first place. So which means the answer has to be negative one. So I hope that was clear. So that's the, uh, straightforward answer now because we don't really need anything more than this. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Okay, so this is number 30, which is the, you know, the last question meant to be the most challenging problem of the test. And the largest grades of the three prime numbers of the factors of this expression, right? This sum. So like, if you have time and then if you have no other, like, um, I guess ideas, you can try your best to take the fourth part of these numbers and then add them together and see if you can find the uh, prime factors, which might take a while, but at least if you have time, then you can try that one, but that's not the point as, as, as we did in the first problem. We don't want to do tedious task. Okay, so which is why we're going to kind of try something else. Like as soon as I see like the 103 and 101, those are really like two numbers are close to 100, right? Or I can just write those numbers as, either like 100 plus three and 100 plus one, and then you can take the fourth power of those sums. But if you do so, you will 
like you will find their values by like binomial theorem or just expanding those. It is okay, but instead of doing this, maybe we can make it a bit better than that because we wanna kind of cancel the stuff if possible, which is what we did in the previous problem. And to do so, I'm gonna just do some sort of substitution. So I'm gonna choose a value, let's say this is X equals the, the number that is just the average of these two numbers, the larger the basis, so which is gonna be 100. Two, the reason I'm going to do that because when I expand those, there will be some sort of cancellation because of negative, because uh, this is going to be x minus like one, this is x plus one, so that should be helpful. So this expression now will be x plus one to the fourth power. Okay, and then this guy would be x minus one to the fourth power. So this is smaller number, so we can just leave it as 16. And what we want to do now, expand this. So to expand this, I'm going to use the, the binomial theorem. So if you don't know about that, so you can just take a look at that. So the x plus one to the uh, fourth power is equal to four choose zero, which is like one times x to the fourth power plus four choose one, which is four times x to the third power times y to the first power, which doesn't make any changes plus four choose two, which is six. And now you get x squared and y squared is just one squared, plus four choose three, which is also four, and then times x to the first power and y to the, the third, which doesn't make any changes, plus one. So again, if you are not sure what I'm talking, so I'm just using the, the binomial theorem, or you can just use the Pascal's triangle to find these coefficient. The power of the x is decreasing by one every time when you move to the next term, and the power of the one is increasing by one, but power of one doesn't make any changes. So that's what we have. And the next one is x minus one to the fourth power. And this using the same idea, that will be equal to x to the fourth, but now it's gonna be minus four x cubed plus six uh, x squared minus four x and then plus one. So that's the first two numbers and then there's 16 after. So if you add these two like expressions, so we see that these will cancel each other. So you will get two copies of the x to the fourth power plus 12 x to the second power and then plus two. And then there is 16 after, so let's keep that in mind. And the goal is just to find the prime factor divisor of this sum, right? So we see that this is already divisible by two. If I Simplify so if I pull the two, so you will get x to the four plus six x squared. That's 18, so which is gonna be nine if you pull the two. But now we have two times something, but we are kind of lucky because this expression looks a perfect square. So which is why we can say this is gonna be equal to x squared plus three to the second power. So as soon as you have this, if you don't really see this immediately, then you should really work on squared up binomial because you can just look at this guy is x squared squared and then this is three squared. And when you multiply x squared by three, that's three x squared and you only double, you get the middle term, which is uh, what the square up binomial mean. So then we have the, the sum of those three numbers is equal to two times x squared plus three, right? Times, x squared plus three. So we already have now three factors, right? So we are looking for the largest prime factor. So, and then if I plug my x, which is 1,002 for this expression, so let's try that as well. So the 102 uh, square, we can square 102, or you can just use the square of binomial, 100 plus two to the second power. So that will give you 100 squared, which is gonna be 10 squared to the second power, which is 10 to the fourth, plus the product of these two will be 200. So it double that, so that's 400. And then two squared is four. So if we add these guys, so you will get 10,000 and then 404. So you just make sure you don't miss anything. So that will be 10,404. Okay, so that is the 100 squared, but there is three as well. So which means my my sum is equal to two times, if you add three to this number, because that's x squared plus three, we got the x squared. So that will give us 
10,407 and then 10,407. So like we do have now like three numbers that multiply, but we don't know if this is a prime numbers, right? Which may not be because if I just add the digits, so one plus four is five plus like uh, seven is 12. So which is divisible, like which is multiple of three, which has to be divisible by three. So if I divide this by three, so you will get three times three is nine, that's 14. So that's another uh, four, that's 12, 20, uh, 20 will give us six times, that's 18, 27, nine times. So I hope I didn't mess up. So 34, 69 times three is gonna be this number. So let's write this way. And then the same thing happening right here. So which is why we can write it this way. So now we don't really need to check anything more than this because we are told the largest of the three prime factors. We already know two is a prime factor and three is a prime factor. So which we already have two and then 3469 must be our the third one. So we don't really need to check this in this case because like they are telling us there are only three. So which is why it has to be the largest of those three because the other two is way smaller, okay? So I hope that was clear. So if you need to review this square of binomial or binomial theorem, so this might be a good time to review those and I'll see you in the next video.